tuning into the Cloud Native FM podcast. This is our monthly explainer on Cloud Native, where we meet folks who are doing incredible job educating community around new Cloud Native technologies. And this is our CNCF Ambassador Series. Let me introduce my guest to you. Mourinho Vijay is a Canadian traveler, international speaker, an open source advocate, and staff solution architect at Kong Inc. He specializes in service mesh, Kubernetes, and networking. He is currently a CNCF and civil cloud ambassador and a lead organizer for Cube Huddle Toronto and a founder of Empathy Ops. He is passionate about technology and modern distributed system. He will always fall back to the pattern of networking and the ways of the OSI. Community building is driving force. I have my favorite guest with me, my best friend, and a long time, my friend, Mourinho Vijay. How are you, Mourinho? Over to you now. Thank you so much for having me, Sam. I'm so excited to be here. And, you know, it's been a while since we've done something live other than we did a space a few months ago. And, you know, since then, there's just been so much going on in the cloud native ecosystem, just in the world in general. Uh, and it's interesting because I kind of I kind of not haven't I haven't focused too much on Kubernetes in the last little bit. Like I've seen what's been going on. But my focus has been elsewhere and it's like i hate to use this word ai but you know ai has entered the chat and for me it's not about you know i'm going to build the next best app with ai it's more like let's find an easy entry point for one me to understand how to use and work with some of this technology but also show the rest of the world like if you haven't figured out some of the advanced stuff yet let's start from the basics and then start to work our way up so a lot of my work lately has been, you know, understanding how to interact with APIs, how to navigate them, um, some with LLMs, others with just standard APIs that are just doing some basic things. And it's also kind of reinvigorating a lot of my network engineering stuff as well. Like the mindset of network engineering is very similar to the mindset of someone that architects for APIs. And I sit there and I wonder like, great, Kubernetes is a great API to do a lot of things for us. But developers aren't centric to Kubernetes. Kubernetes is just one small conversation of it. There's so much more beyond it, what developers are trying to do, how they're trying to build. They're trying to optimize how they're releasing some of their software. And I'm like sitting here thinking to myself, what have I been doing for the last two years? Like, where have I been? So having said that, there's a couple of things I've been working on. Uh, the first is just learning a little bit more about um, how API gateways are handling LLM-based traffic, can we apply some of the API principles and even service mesh principles to what we do What we do with AI? Not the other way around. I don't want to inject AI into my conversation. I want to see how I can optimize the usage of it. And then some of the other stuff I've also been doing, uh, I've been focusing a little bit more on security as well, because I've been partnered with um, Mark Borstein from Tremolo, and we've been doing some work around certificate management and multi-tenancy and as a result of that, we're running a workshop in September. It's actually a few weeks away where folks, if you've attended Coop Huddle or if you're wanting a taste of Coop Huddle, I highly recommend you reach out to me and come out to this little event. And then the idea behind this event was to be a lot more hands-on. So it's great that people will come on stage and talk to you. But the, the nicer thing is when you can get on stage and get people to do things with you in a tutorial sense or a workshop sense. So we're we're trying something interesting this time around, and I'm hopeful that we're able to scale this to something and change Coop Huddle and how it looks and how we can offer it to folks going forward and make it more global. Now, having said that, there's a lot of activity in the CNCF side. One of the things that I enjoy that you're doing, Siam, is you're interviewing CNCF ambassadors and publishing these videos for everyone else to see, like what we're up to. Um, and it's great. I love amplifying the voices here. And we're doing that too. Like Akansha and I, we're getting Twitter spaces on. And I think she might have reached out to you too, because we're going to do one with you. And it's because sometimes folks like to sit in the car and they want to listen in on these conversations or they want to listen to an audio or podcast or something while they're doing some other activities. And this is great. I love Twitter spaces, but we get the best people to come on, share what they're working on, share their ideas share perspectives, share how folks can get into, let's say, CNCF ambassadorship. And in fact, we have a space in about half an hour, so about yeah, 10, 10 a.m. my time, 
to talk about CNCF ambassadorship because you're one, I'm one, right? We should encourage folks to join this program and see some of the benefits that they gain by, you know, collaborating with other individuals in the space and then outside of the space too, but also to give folks a taste of what it's like to be a part of a large community. I think that's important. Yes, absolutely. Super important as well. All I, all the content you have put on, I can see as an observability matrix as well, because some people are doing the same stuff in their local region, and they don't understand if this actually becomes valuable in near future. They have to continue on or just pause it. But seeing others doing the same stuff, the observability tell you that, no, this has some values in it. People are doing it, so keep up the momentum with it. So thank you, Mourinho, for wonderful space you have been doing because I really love enjoying it. The reason why I think the people who are actually listening to us might be liking as well because there's observability layer in it is because we have sometimes we feel uh, we share a common ground with each other. And listening to these stories, which influence you to do the more of these kind of stuff as well. So speaking of August, one thing I do like to call out, there are a few spaces you have been running. I will include the link so people can join in as well. So another thing, you are running a workshop in September. I definitely include the link so people can join in as well. And I can recommend folks to join Mourinho's YouTube channel as well, because he's a very hands-on kind of a person. I love learning about service mesh networking, observability, and especially distributed system, how they work in his YouTube channel. So tons of congratulations for your extra wonderful work on this space as well. So speaking of September in journal, what are the other avenues you have been most actively going in some conference, anything you have planned up front so people can meet you in September? You know, the I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not going to be traveling as much for the next few months. Um, and that's primarily because, you know, I've got a lot going on at home. I've taken on a new role and I'm focused in on project work. So I have to be a little bit more cognizant of my travel time. But having said that, uh, if I think about KubeCon for a second, I'm going to be at KubeCon. I'm actually, and that's because I'm going to be speaking at Platform Engineering Day with Adriana. And I'm excited about that. So, you know, if you're going to be going to KubeCon, I highly recommend you come check out our talk. We're talking about policy as code, the non-challenging uh, way. You know, policy as code in an easy sense. And, you know, we encourage you all to come by and ask us questions and hang out with us, right? Well, you know, even if you don't come to the talk, then have to have a conversation about virtually anything. Yes, absolutely. Definitely. And Renya, one question might be people asking because you are using Twitter X spaces, mostly in X.com, previously Twitter. And some of the people might want you to have to use LinkedIn as well. So LinkedIn RDU has the same feature as well. We have some good community support in there. Are you thinking about moving towards LinkedIn and RDU event as well? So people might be on that platform can listen to as well. I haven't tried out. Is there a possibility we can actually use two platforms at the same time? Yeah, so I, I really are, I'm really looking into this right now, primarily for a number of reasons. One uh, is because there's an audience on LinkedIn that isn't on Twitter. So we want to be able to tap into them and make sure that we can share some of this stuff. But two, um, one of the bigger challenges that we're seeing at the moment is the normal traction that we would see on spaces isn't there as much as it used to be. Like, I remember some of the spaces I was on, we'd get like hundreds of people showing up and that might have something to do with the algorithms within X and that's okay. But having said that, like, I'm, I'm really investigating ways that we can have like a, an abstracted API, like an audio API that can communicate to both LinkedIn and Twitter's API and, you know, do things like record and, and have like, understand who's speaking or when. It's the thing is though, it's a little bit different than how we do video, right? With video, you can stream to YouTube, Twitch, to LinkedIn and a number of other destinations uh, and even Twitter, but the API for audio is different and it's a little bit more challenging to work with. So we're investigating it now. Uh, what it may initially result in is like two sets of spaces where we have one on LinkedIn and then one on Twitter um, happening at different times just to be able to accommodate for the different audiences. And then maybe one day we'll have something worked out where we just feed into one platform and it just distributes to 
one or two or multiple platforms. Um, another area we're investigating is also turning a lot of our spaces into podcasts. So folks can go, to, or even on Spotify, so folks can go to any one of these locations and then access um, a, a recording of these podcasts as well. So these are the very good insight, a very good news as well. A podcast I definitely love about is, but one thing is a LinkedIn audio I'm missing is because you won't record it. So it's it's going to be an instant one because you want to have something recorded. If people, folks can miss it, they can actually listen to him whenever they have free time. In x.com, you have a liberty of few weeks, but the LinkedIn is missing it as well. But I definitely want Mourinho should try out these two strategies as well. So before I let you go, Mourinho, for this our monthly recap, let us know what the current work in, in, your, in your newer job is happening right now and what you have been recently busy with. Yeah, so I actually have been shifting a lot of gears. I started with Kong like probably towards the end of June. And I only basically spent a month onboarding. And then month two, I kind of just went right into project work. The first project I was working on was around the AI gateway stuff to understand how we can uh, optimize things around AI responses, like queries and, and responses so that we can cache them and reduce things like latency and token consumption. Uh, the next thing that I moved on to after that was this massive professional services project, which is not just me. I have a few other teammates, but because I've spent so much time in the mesh world, I am now focusing specifically on the mesh part of this project. But it doesn't mean that like my part is just one silo thing. It's so encompassing because it touches different areas of that company and organization. It's It's honestly one of the, it's probably the biggest project I've ever worked on. And it's exciting because it puts me in an uncomfortable situation to go and learn, right? When you're put into a technical spot and you're expected to know certain things or you're expected to find out the answer, it's amazing. It's a great feeling. So that's what I'm doing now. I can't share who the client is, but I'm sure that once the work is done, they'll probably have a reference architecture and a case study to talk about it. But, you know, the only thing I could say is like, it's it's something to do with flying. That's all I have to say. So it's it's some cool stuff. Awesome, great. And I, I definitely recommend it because Mourinho has been very, very involved in the service mesh space. He's been in the solo.in for a very long time in a developer relations managing field. And he's done a wonderful job in the service mesh area. And this is one of my exciting area for a very long time because distributed system in journal have so many complexity involved in it. It's all these layers are hidden. And if something goes bad, it's going to be a nightmare for the whole organization. And, uh, and we don't have big resources or big names in our community. And Muruni is one of them who can actually boost up your productivity. And if you have some questions around that domain, so he's a good person to talk about these things. So before I let you go, might we speak again in after the cube gone to did a review on this. But today, as the schedule is out for the platform engineering day, in a few words, in a few sentences, can you let us know what is your target audience for your talk? happening in Salt Lake this November on Platform Engineering Day. Absolutely. So our talk is focused on policy of code in a nutshell, but the idea is to optimize the experience for platform teams and consumers of the platform as well, so that as developers and platform teams have to build and manage these applications respectively, the policy portion of it is something more of a human readable language. Folks can identify what their policy schemas look like, but also can dictate what they look like simultaneously by saying, hey, I want it to do this, but I don't want it to do that. And it should be as simple as that. I'm not saying we're going to use actual human language to make this work, but policy, of, policy as code should be a natural part of your application building and deployment process. Awesome. Absolutely. I will definitely include the link in the description of the YouTube chat. So people definitely who are planning to attending this Cube Consult Lake, make sure you are in the same room where Adriana Villiella and Mourinho were just talking about because they have wonderful knowledge around this subject as well. So last question, Mourinho, is a quick one. Next few months until Cube Gone, it's going to be a Cube CTL edit, Cube CTL apply or CubeCTL delayed? 
which one is you are? Probably a lot of kubectl editing going on. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Great. Thank you very much for any 